Okay, we are back with chapter 10, page 12, and we're starting on example 6, which is a fair value hedge. Get the autofocus there. Okay, so with a fair value hedge, we will recognize in profit the gains and losses on the hedged item in advance to match them against the exchange gains and losses from the forward contract. So in the last example, the cash flow hedge, we kind of hid the gains and losses from the hedging instrument in OCI and then brought them out by transferring them to sales. In this one, we're going to court a gain or loss on the, um, in this case, unrecognized firm commitment early. Okay, so it's the same example. Wadsworth con contracted again, remember the words, to tell you it's not recorded yet. To sell inventory, delivery was scheduled, and so on, and everything is the same. Okay, so again, we're using the net method the forward contract rather than the gross. Even though you know how to do both, both are acceptable for recording, it's just presentation with a net. So, June 2nd, sign the contract for sale. No entry. And signed forward contract, and you write a memo, etc. Um, let's put give details. Okay, now we come to the important stuff. So June 30th, year end. Now, the first thing we're going to do is write the forward contract to fair value. So, as we saw last time, the U.S. went down. We're giving U.S. dollars. So we're happy and it's a gain. So we credit gain on exchange, but this time there's no OCI. It goes into net income. And debit forward contract. And the calculation's the same. 1.280 minus 1.275 times the 500,000, which is 20. So that's no different. What is just different is there's a second entry now at year end. And we are going to record a gain or loss on the hedged item, which hasn't been recorded yet, by adjusting the upcoming receivable because it's a sale with an e but opposite gain or loss to the Jing instrument the forward contract so, that's a lot more words than you need to go see this. This was a gain up here. Well, now we're going to record the opposite. We're going to record a loss down here. Loss on exchange for the exact same value. And we're going to create either an asset or liability. It depends on the balance. So it's called commitment. 
assets slash liability for 2500 and obviously right now it's got a credit balance so it's a liability okay so this is the big difference cash flow hedge this would have been OCI and this wouldn't have happened with a fair value hedge we this in net income but we also record an equal but opposite gain or loss and put it to a commitment asset or liability. So then the rest kind of continues along in a similar manner as our last example. So August 1st is the sale and settlement. So mark the forward contract to fair value. And looking back here, USD went down again. So it's a gain because we're giving. So gain on exchange and debit forward contract for 1.25 minus 1.272 times 500,000. So that's the 1500 we had last time. Now, because we've done that, we have to do the opposite gain or list loss. Gain or the loss to commitment asset or liability. So it was a gain, so we're going to record loss on exchange for 1500 and credit commitment asset liability for 1500 So these two guys are always going to be paired. So now we can record the sale. I mean, the order doesn't really matter. You could have done the sale first. doesn't make a difference. Record sale. Debit cash. Credit sales. For 500000 And it's not a forward contract, so we should be using the spot rate today which is 1.272. And finally, we can settle the forward contract. Just a reminder, our forward contract had 2,500 in it and then 1,500, so it's sitting at 4,000. And now we're not so concerned about the OCI because there is no OCI account, but we do have a commitment asset liability we care about. So it's got 2,500. 1500 and it's going to go 1000. And yes, they'll always be the same. So let's do the cash first. And again, you could just have one cash account and that would be okay. But we are getting Canadian dollars, we're giving American dollars. And then we have to close the forward contract. So the forward contract's easy. We already know the balance is four thousand. We're getting Canadian. It's going to be five hundred thousand times the original contract price. So that's six forty. And 
the U.S. cash is going to be 500,000 times 1.272, which is the spot or the forward today. And that works out to 636. So you could net this just to a debit of cash for 4000 if you want it. Okay, so are we done or is there something we still need to do? We've got to close the commitment asset. So close commitment asset liability to sales if it was a sale or to inventory if it was a purchase. Remember you have to go look in the text and make sure you get the inventory, sorry, the purchases uh, straight. So we're going to debit commitment asset liability to close for 4000 and credit sales for 4000 And that is the fair value hedge. So then, just to finish um, this chapter, um, you can look through this. The no hedge accounting. And you can go through this example to see how a hedge for a highly probable forecasted transaction is. And notice we use the cash flow method. Um, and you can just read all of that. Not critical for this course. Um, in terms of problems, problem 10.2 which I didn't even list on there. Oh, it's over here in the extra problems. Unless you know exactly what you're doing, I would ignore this. So ignore until you know material well. And you can read this about it. Um, if you look on page 16. This is what we're um, kind of talking about. The hedged item is recorded right away. So gains and losses for both are in the same time period. So you don't really need hedge accounting. And so no hedge accounting is needed. But you can use it. For example, if your policy is to use hedge accounting on all your hedges, and this one happens to have a recorded transaction, that's OK. You can still use it, um, like in problem 10-2, but not necessary. Oh, I can't spell necessary to match the gains and losses. So these last two pages, 15 and 16, aren't really critical. I'd focus on the stuff we did in the examples. So that is chapter 10. Hopefully it made sense, and I will see you in chapter 11. Bye.